Today, we're talking about an area renowned for expensive inanimate objects. No, not Chelsea's dressing room, but on the other side of the city, at Canary Wharf. And we'll tell you the story of how this district of London evolved into the city's premier destination for suspenders and Colombian sugar. Wow. You take it and then you talk for hours. Let's have that. We head back to the early 19th century when the area, which is known as the Isle of Dogs, was developed into docks by the West India Dock Company, becoming one of the busiest docks in the world for over 150 years. It was in 1936 when IKEA Dock were developed to accommodate for the fruit trade in the Canary Islands and would be known as Canary Wharf. Moving into the 1960s, when shipping started to become containerized, meaning the docks would start to migrate further down the Thames, where it was better suited. This resulted in the decline of the docks on the Isle of Dogs, to the point where they were all closed down by the 1980s, becoming an industrial wasteland. As this was the 1980s, and the era of Maggie Thatcher, all this disused land wouldn't be left idle for long, with the government setting up the London Docklands Development Corporation to try and kickstart regeneration of the area, which included tax exemptions and capital allowances. This carrot dangling would do the trick when an American businessman called Michael von Klemm would arrive with a vision to develop Canary Wharf into a new business district. The new development would take advantage of the old London and Blackwall Railway to provide a connection with the newly opened Docklands Light Railway. Initial proposals focused development on what was to be known as Dockland Square, with the pinnacle being a 235 metre tall tower, with construction on the new development beginning in 1988. As a fair whack of the area was occupied by water, to gain extra space, a series of coffer dams were constructed, with water being drained out and then filled in with concrete and soil to ensure it would be solid ground to build on top of. Building on top of a dock had its advantages, being right next to the Thames allowed for much of the construction and excess material to be carried out using barges, drastically reducing the amount of lorries required that would clog up London's roads. Once the ground was finished, the foundation of the buildings could go in, which mainly consisted of concrete piles that were driven into the ground up to 23 metres on One Canada Square. The first building to pop up at Canary Wharf was One Canada Square which paid homage to the home nation of the developer, Olympia and York, opening in 1991, becoming the country's tallest building, standing at 235 metres. The tower's opening would be perfectly timed, right in the middle of a recession, leaving the building largely unoccupied and the developer of Canary Wharf bankrupt. To serve the new district, an extension of the Docklands Light Railway was built, providing access with the City of London However, it was the arrival of the Jubilee Line in 1999 that would see the area really start to kick off. The arrival of the 21st century would see an explosion of skyscraper construction, with the notable additions being 8 and 25 Canada Square, housing both HSBC and Citibank respectively. If you thought the area had decent transport links with both the DLR and Tube, well think again, as the area is home to a station on the newly opened Elizabeth Line which opened in May 2022. The station is located within the West India North Dock on an artificial island with the station being built using, you guessed it, a coffer dam consisting of 293 interlocking piles, 18.5 metres high, allowing water to be pumped out and the station box constructed. The new railway cuts the journey to that other bastion of righteousness, the City of London, to less than 10 minutes or one United meltdown. I don't believe Brighton have got three or four goals in them. I, I can't believe what I'm looking at here. 59 minutes, 4-0 to Brighton. As of 2022, there are currently 27 buildings that are more than 100 metres tall in Canary Wharf and houses a collection of the world's most admired companies. Hello, I like money. The area has plans to get even bigger with the addition of Wood Wharf, which is currently under construction with a completion date of 2023, it will definitely look to cement the area as a top destination for. Briefcase wanker. 